I think the whole game knows that we like to fly expensive ships. This Pelagorn is a good example of that. I changed around 30 to 40 rig integrations on this ship throughout its life cycle and that is around maybe 60 billion isk total. So yeah, uh, I did spend a lot of isk on this Balgon, but it was definitely worth it. Now I did fly the Revelation and so far I really like that ship. So today uh, I'll be flying the second Dreadnought, the Naglifar. Now this is uh, a ship that I have received recently. And the main difference between the Revelation and this Dreadnought is that the Revelation has better tracking, but this thing is super tanky. The tankiest ship in the game, to be more precise. And of course, it's also the tallest ship in the game, as you can see. These things barely fit in the station, and here you can see how how tall uh, this Dreadnought actually is. Uh, it's ridiculous how, how big these things are. Well then, uh, let me undock and let me show you a closer look of this ship. Now, uh, I did say that the Dreadnoughts have the best ship models in the game and that can be said about the Naglifar as well. I noticed a lot of a lot of very small details uh, on this ship. For example, if you look at the ship's back, you will see some elevators going up and down. And there's also uh, some other things that I would like to show you, especially when you enter the siege mode. I think this ship has one of the most interesting animations out of all other dreadnoughts. So, um, I think it will be time to let me just double check. Yeah, three capacitor batteries. Okay, so this is the this is the brick tank fit that I currently have on this ship, and I will show you several different builds uh, on this dreadnought. Now, I find this ship to be excellent if you are expecting a big fleet to land on you. Well, I find the revelation to be excellent for a small gate camp. That's mostly uh, because the Revelation has better tracking. So uh, I did say that I will enter the siege mode, so let's do just that. And here you can see the turrets actually uh, go out of their position. And there is this thing that's rotating in the middle of the ship, not quite sure what that is, but there is something spinning and I really don't know what it is. Here you can take a look at the kill marks, they are located at the right side above the top turret of this ship and they're barely visible but they have around 14-15 kills on this ship, around 200 on the revelation at the moment. And of course you cannot warp or dock if you are in the siege mode. The cooldown is on 120 seconds so you have to plan uh, what you do once you enter the siege mode because it can be quite difficult to uh, to stop these ships if they are floating around. So the Robos plus 400% until this link activation time and the ship has a jump drive. Capital cannon operation bonus will give you plus 5% capital cannon damage, minus 4% capital cannon activation time and the Dreadnought Command bonus will give you plus 7.5% shield boost a mouth. Now, the main thing about this ship is the shield tank. This thing is insanely tanky, and that skill bonus makes this thing ridiculous. And I will show you how much shield it can boost uh, later on. This ship has 3 high slots, 5 medium slots, 8 low slots, 3 combat and 3 engineering rigs, which is basically the default setup for all dreadnoughts. It has a decent fuel capacity, 715,000 hit points, 
Now this ship is a shield tank, so do not even attempt to make the Naglifar a armor tank, it's not going to end well. I haven't seen a armor tank Naglifar yet, hopefully I will not see one because that's very cursed, but uh, yeah, this ship is a shield tank. It has a very decent capacitor, and to be honest, it really needs to have a very good capacitor because the capital shield boosters are very, very power hungry. It can lock 8 targets, a massive signature radius, 85 meters is the scan resolution, 1.5 AU per second is the warp speed, and of course this thing is uh, very heavy and very slow. Don't expect a dreadnought to be very fast, although they can be quite fast with the micro warp drive. So, uh, what do I have fitted on this thing? So currently almost a thousand DPS using the Republic Fleet Capital Auto Cannons. They have 62.4 km accuracy well off, optimal range 15.6 km, tracking speed 0 0.48, which is not that good. On the revelation I have 0 0.84 with the camp build, which is almost doubling on the tracking on this ship, which means that you will have issues to hit small moving targets. And when I, when I say small moving targets, I mean a cruiser or battle cruiser might be a problem. But a battleship shouldn't be that much of a problem. So, uh, the rest of the fit, full-on tank, triple adaptive shield with triple capacitor battery and dual shield boosters. As for the rigs, well, uh, as usual, I did decide to go with a full-on tank because this ship is after all meant to be used uh, as a tank. Capacitor time is 7 minutes and 10 seconds, although uh, it lasts for a very long time because of the ridiculous shield boosts that it can have. These are the rigs, I focused on resistance and shield booster performance. Basically the same rigs that I use on the Ashmo and on the Maelstorm. In this case, uh, these are only capital rigs, so that's the only difference, but the idea behind the build is is the same. And as with the other uh, shield tanks, it works really good, absolutely no problem with that. 53, 52, 54 and 50% 50 uh, resistances on all damage types, which is really good. As for the engineering rigs, I focused on maximum possible capacitor performance, after all, the large shield boosters, the capital shield boosters, uh, are very power hungry and you want to have your capacitor in a very good shape for a very long time, or should I say, for as long as possible. So, uh, let's take a look at the active stats on this brick, and I call this ship a brick, but I should call it a tower because it's just so tall. Anyway, um, 2.6 million effective hit points, 84, 83, 84 and 83, very balanced, actually very nicely balanced. Uh, the resistance points are looking really good on the ship with this current setup. So uh, let's enter the siege mode and this time uh, I will show you how much shield this thing can actually boost and of course the shield booster performance, after all I did improve uh, the shield booster as well as the tank. The DPS is 8000, almost 8.1000, to be more accurate 8099.61 DPS, which is really good for a full tank build, 2.6 million effective hit points. It recovers 51,000 shield every 3.85 seconds, which is actually really good. So you are recovering a third of shield in less than 4 seconds. That translates into a lot of, a lot of uh, damage taken, or should I say a lot of damage that will be taken with this ship and that will be recovered very very quickly and the capacitor uh, is not going to suffer that much because I have three capacitor batteries and you are definitely not going to have to use 
the shield boosters all the time. Basically, you run the shield booster for as long as the capacitor battery capacitor is uh, up and running. Because by the time you run out of one capacitor battery, your shield will be at 100%. Which is really good, because that makes your capacitor last for a very long time and you don't have to worry about that. However, the main issue will be a Balgorn, because the Balgorn can kill your capacitor if uh, they have enough time to do that. A Balgorn fleet can easily kill a Dreadnought in a very short time, because they will kill the capacitor of the Dreadnought, and then the Dreadnought will have no tank. Now you can also slap one reactive and one damage control instead of one reactive and one capacitor battery, which will improve the tank, although the capacitor will suffer a little bit, but still you will have a lot of resistance to play with and you will have fantastic shield booster performance. This gives 8.64% resistance to all damage types on shield, armor and hull, which is really helpful and uh, really nice lasts for 13 seconds, you can actually activate this at 20% shield, that way uh, you can actually wait for the cooldown on the capacitor batteries, if necessary, or you can actually save your capacitor uh, to tank a little bit more damage, which is still a very good idea and a very nice tactic to use. Once activated, 7.9 million hit points, 94, 94, 95 and 95% resistance, which is to be expected. A really good, really good uh, resistance on this thing. Now, with triple Daptis and one, uh, one damage control, the cold uh, stats are 86, 85, 86 and 85, 2.9 million effective hit points, almost 3 million. Once activated, the hit points go up to 8.8 .8 million, which is really impressive. 95, 95, 95 and 95% resistance, which is fantastically balanced. I actually really love to see uh, balanced out resistance values. It means that the build is okay and that it should work really well. Alright, well. Docking um, request accepted. Let me see if there is another build that I will uh, show you here. But actually, I think it's it's time to go and test out the tank on this thing. I think everyone is curious to see uh, how much, how quickly it can recover shield. Well, uh, it just happens that we have a couple of dreadnoughts lurking around at the gate and, well, uh, told them to shoot at me. And, of course, they did. I am at 24% shield, did use the damage control, and so far the idea to use the damage control at around 20-30% shield works really well. Shield boosters are active, and there goes the shield back up to 100%. Did not even use one full capacitor battery cycle. And the shield is now back at 100%. That is some impressive performance. Now we have one Dominix that crashed our second shield booster test. So let's just go and kill... Let's just kill this Dominix first and then uh, we will continue with the, with the shield test. Did have my shield up to 20% but had to quickly boost that up because this battleship just popped in out of nowhere and well uh, this battleship is our first kill of today a very nice kill actually very nice moros performance as well moros has actually the highest dps out of all dreadnoughts i think i'll fly one very soon we will see i'm very curious to see how that thing works Let's take a look at the kill, not a bad kill, did drop some very nice modules, overall uh, a very nice first kill for today, very unexpected, they crashed our shield test, well, 
back on the shield test. I did use the capacity, uh, I did use the um, damage control, not the capacity battery. Not yet at least. And now I'm at 16% shield, 45% shield, around 70% shield, and back to 100%. Very nice. Well, um, I have to admit, a very, very impressive shield booster performance. Now, uh, what do we have here? We have a Dominic split. And let's focus on the first one. First Dominix going down, there is five of them. Looks like they are using... I think that was a shield... Um, what was it called? A group shield booster. And looks like all of them have that module. Very interesting. Well, first Dominix was destroyed, working to shoot down the next one. The next one has been destroyed, okay. Let's focus on the third Dominix. And they are losing shield. Let's lock on the last one. Third Dominix going down. Let's focus on the next one. Bella ships popping like popcorn. I actually love this. Working on shooting down the next one. Okay. And the last Dominix. Not a bad first hit. 36,000. And the next one. 14,000. And the. Uh, Fifth Dominix has been destroyed. Very nice. Well, um, I did not expect that to happen, but it did. And we had five battleships just served like that. Not quite sure what happened, but yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, haven't had something like this happen in a very long time. So, uh, that was a. I guess, a gate camp crash attempt not quite sure how to call that but in any case uh, we have won that battle now uh, what do we have here we have a couple faction cruisers landing okay that's interesting that looks like a pvp fleet primary target will be hold a second we have a vigilant well the primary target was destroyed one snubbel has been eliminated the next primary target will be the Vigilant. The Vigilant because of the very good webs needs to be destroyed. That was a nice first hit. The Vigilant going down. Okay, Vigilant has been destroyed. Let's now go and shoot the Cinnabel. Well, this enable is using a mic web drive, and there is no way that I'll hit the ship moving that fast. So I will just wait for them to make a mistake. Let's see if this enable will make the mistake. And they will. They will. And almost. Almost had that enable. If I had the tracking computers, then that would be a very nice hit. But did still hit and the idea that I had in mind worked. Almost had the third ship. Well, that's a nice Vigilant kill and let's take a look at the Cinnabel, also very nice. Not quite sure why they engaged a capital ship gate camp, but I'm not gonna complain. A nice kill. Two faction cruisers destroyed, very... very quickly. Next target we have another Cinnabel. Now this is where the Revelation will perform better than the Naglifar. The Revelation has fantastic tracking for our Dreadnought and 
I don't have a problem to hit a cruiser that's moving with dual tracking computers. However, with this ship, that is a small problem, uh, as you can see. This ship is not able to hit a cruiser that's moving, even without the, the afterburner. We'll have to rely on uh, the trick that you saw earlier to hit uh, these, these small ships. Now this is going to be uh, the same example, this time I didn't have any tracking computers installed, full tank, but still it didn't matter, even with tracking computers I would not be able to uh, hit that symbol. Now let's take a look at the kill, I'm very curious to see. 1.4 billion, not bad, actually really nice, and this symbol had a aura warp core optimizer installed. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting fit on that Cinnable. Now back on the first Cinnable, still shooting, still not able to hit the target. And my fleet mates don't seem to... They don't seem to want to web this target, so I'll just keep on shooting and I'll just hope that I'm able to hit this target. But so far, every single hit seems to be missing. Now, how did they hit that Cinnabel uh, before? Well, they did try to warp away and there is that one moment when their ship is moving close to zero meters per second. And that's where uh, I did open fire and that's when I hit the ship. So that's the trick that I use with the Minimata Dreadnought to hit cruisers. And it works. It works with any uh, turret weapon. With lasers, with railguns, it works really, really well. But this Cinnabel is very lucky, and well, uh, there was no webs on this ship. So, of course, I'm not going to be uh, able to hit that one, but still was a very nice kill. And I even did turn off the siege mode. Now, with the revelation, it doesn't matter what kind of ship it is, just one example of what this thing does to cruisers. This is a Ashimo that's using a micro drive to burn away. They are moving very fast, but it didn't matter because this thing just can track anything. That's why, that's why I love the um, Amar ships and Blood Raider ships, of course. They use lasers, and lasers are just fantastic. They have excellent tracking, and this is the this is the Ashimo kill 1.7 billion, almost 1.8, which is still a very nice value and a very nice little faction cruiser. Next target, well, we have a humpback high mobility. Now this is one of those ships that I usually don't see that often, and usually uh, I like to include them in a video because they're kind of rare ships. And they're also um, counted as battleships. That one survived two hits and they were destroyed. Nice. Now let's take a look at the kill. There's a chance that they did carry something valuable, although honestly I haven't seen... I think only one time one of these ships actually had something valuable inside, but the other times was just empty. Okay, next target, we have one Oracle. Let's focus down the Bella Cruiser. Let's not shoot the Moros this time. Okay. Nice. Nice little Bella Cruiser kill. Through 345 million, not bad. Not bad. Okay, let's go towards the next one. Oh wait, hold a second, we have a Vexor, what is that? Well, uh, let's see if I can... shoot down this cruiser. 
did not expect a Vexor to jump in at the same time as the Oracle. Well, they got destroyed. The other Dreadnought has also very good tracking. I think the... I think the Mimatra Dreadnought has the worst tracking out of all Dreadnoughts. And here you can see a classic example of what you can find in our home system. <laughs> a bunch of Dreadnoughts just lurking around. I mean, this is just hilarious. There's like... We have one, two, two revelations and two Neglifars just lurking around. And there is probably a couple cloaked Dreadnoughts as well. That's a thing. We like we like our we love our cloaky dreadnoughts. So here you can probably see around five or six dreadnoughts at the um, at the gate. And of course, I I wasn't able to hit that Drake. Four hundred fourteen million. Well, not bad. Very nice. Also, very nice ships that participated in the in the kill. Next target, we have a Hurricane Logistic. Looks like my turrets have a had a stuck animation there. The capital turret animations are really nice. I love the the look of them. I have to say the developers did a good job to um, to port the effects from EVE Online into this game. They are nearly identical. And for some reason this was a empty hurricane logistic. Well, not sure why, but... But what is this? Oh, just one... Just one omen trainer warping around. Now we have one Daredevil, that's around 180 kilometers away from me. And the question, am I going to be able to hit that little frigate? And yes, I was able to hit that frigate with dual tracking computers. The same trick works with cruisers, works with frigates, works with interceptors, works with basically anything. Next target we have one Astero. Am I going to be able to hit this little frigate with the dreadnoughts? Well, looks like that's not going to be the case because this uh, this frigate is moving and they warped away. Next target, we have a hurricane, a red hurricane. That means priority target. And well, they have been deleted very quickly. As to be expected from from our fleet. Let's take a look at the kill. Well, not bad. Uh, a nice build. Almost. I actually have to double check the the low slots on every ship before I say a nice build. Be before, because. Let me tell you, I I've seen so many cursed builds that, I don't know, uh, sometimes I just question how can someone come to such ideas to build some of these ships that I see. Y I think most of you know what I'm talking about. I did show you some very cursed builds in the past. I actually thought to make a uh, video series where I show you all the different cursed builds that I encounter. I think that would be actually hilarious. Although... Although still... Uh, still thinking about that. I think it might be a very fun idea. We will see. Next target we have one Cyclone. And while well, that Cyclone was blown away very quickly. Not a bad build. Well actually, yeah, not a bad build. Cyclone with torpedoes and a shield tank with a micro drive, a PvP Cyclone. Not bad. Next target we have another Cyclone. This one survived the first hit. Nice kill. 
it's actually ridiculously easy to finish the Concord Pass with this thing. Basically with any other Dreadnought. We have another Cyclone. Let's focus fire on the Cyclone, not on the on the Stargate. Not quite sure why I was shooting at the gate, but okay. Let's go towards the next one. We have a Prophecy. Prophecy survived the first hit, but it got eliminated by the other Dreadnought. Well, that's a cursed build, a shield tank prophecy. Okay, well, I have, I've seen it. I think I've seen it all. Next target, we have one Muller. And surprisingly, it hit the first time, okay. You know, sometimes, sometimes it actually hits. Not quite sure how that happens, but sometimes it hits. Sometimes it doesn't. And looks like the cannon animation is stuck. Well, uh, I guess enjoy the view. I always like to record these videos in 4K because I know that a lot of you have these high resolution monitors or, or screens. And I know that this game is very pretty. Well, next, Mahler. And looks like my autocans are able to track. But I did not get the kill, and that's okay. Let's go towards the next target. We have a Raven. They are... My apologies, not a Raven. Not quite sure what I was looking at, but that, that's a Thorax. A very weird looking Raven indeed. And that was a nice kill. Not a very... That's definitely not a cheap Thorax. 112 million for a tier 6 cruiser. Not bad. And of course, it was red. Alright, well, uh, next target. Now we have a Raven. This Raven is at 98 kilometers sniping. Although, this revelation has around 220 optimal... 220 kilometers optimal range. So I can easily hit at this distance, even even without using the siege mode, and I forced this raven to warp away. Well, mission successful. The raven has been chased away, and I can now approach the gate. I try not to turn on the siege mode while away from the gate, because it's really difficult to, uh, really difficult to accelerate or slow down. These things are still very slow, and that's one of the things that you have to be careful around. Next target, a third Mahler, and this time I have the revelation, and of course tracking is not a problem. Alpha damage is also not a problem, and this that cruiser was blown away without a problem. Next target, we have one of the new ships. Well, not technically new, but uh, these things are now tier 8, they were tier 9, and that was a nice covator kill. Although, uh, it's it's empty for some reason, and not quite sure why people fly empty ships, but I guess that's, that's what it is. So, uh, that would be it for the Mimata Dreadnought for today. Uh, honestly, I really enjoy flying these things, they are... Some of the most ridiculous ships that I have personally ever flown in this game. And I really hope that you uh, enjoy seeing those ships as well. So, uh, there is a little bonus at the end, so I really hope that you enjoy that as well. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time. And now for the Balgorn, well, the finale for this video.